This 6.5-mile rising stone wall in the Pacific isn't just holding back waves. It is protecting over $22 billion in trade. Ever wondered what would happen if this century-old lifeline somehow fails? The Columbia River isn't your ordinary natural marvel. It's a supercharged artery of American industry that fuels billions in trades every year. It stretches over 1,200 miles, covering seven U.S. states and one Canadian province. The river's watershed spans an area larger than the state of Texas, and its mouth, well, things get even scarier. At its mouth, the Columbia River unleashes an astounding 192 million acre-feet of water every year. However, that's not all. The Columbia River is covered by 19 hydroelectric dams that generate nearly half the amount of electricity needed to power the Pacific Northwest. This helps power millions of homes, cities, and factories in the region. Without these dams, the entire region's power would tremble, and they'd have to resort to other sources of energy. Believe it or not, Columbia is one of the most important energy sources in the United States and a big part of their trade. However, underneath all the utility this river provides, it hides a deadly secret. A secret that has claimed thousands of ships and countless lives at its deadly gateway. At the Columbia River, nature unleashes chaos when the river collides with the Pacific Ocean. Due to this deadly convergence, we get the Columbia River Bar, which is undoubtedly one of the most treacherous maritime passages in the entire world. The passage destroyed thousands of ships and has taken hundreds of lives because of the gauntlet formation caused by the crushing cross currents, shifting sandbars, and rogue waves. For centuries, even the most experienced sailors and maritime experts have feared this passage. Even though the passage is so dangerous, it's still a key trade route. Locals can see the shipwrecks at the shore indicating the river's wrath. Due to these deadly conditions, it was given the title The Graveyard of the Pacific, as every ship that attempted to cross it took a huge gamble. However, by the mid-1800s, there was finally an answer to this passage. Sinking under the pressure of rising death tolls and trade disruption, the US government had to act quickly. In 1884, they finally greenlit a solution which was as bold as the river itself. A massive jetty system. If you're not familiar with a jetty, it's basically a man-made structure that protrudes from land out into water and serves as a breakwater, walkway, or both. In 1885, the U.S. Army Corp of Engineers started constructing the South Jetty at the ocean. This colossal stone structure stretches 4.5 miles long and 30 feet above the waves into the Pacific. Its mission was clear. Direct the river's flow, wash away sediment, and carve a stable channel for the ships to rest. The project took over 10 years to construct and was finally inaugurated in 1895. Since its operation, ships that once used to sink in the passage can now pass through it safely, flourishing trade in the region. Following the success of the South Jetty, the US government decided to further secure other sections of the ocean. Even though the jetty controlled the ocean's wrath considerably, it wasn't enough to completely neutralize it. Seeing this, the Army Corp launched Phase 2 of the jetty system, the North Jetty. This structure reached out from the Washington coast into the river's mouth to tame its flow from an even stronger force. It created a deeper and straighter channel that allowed easier and safer navigation. The sediment accumulation didn't just vanish, it was just simply moved to make way for the jetty. This constant reshaping forced the engineers to add a third piece to the jetty system, called the Jetty A. Completed in 1939, Jetty A was quite the enforcer, which acted as the last piece of the puzzle. It shielded the channel, controlled the currents, and ensured that the other jetties did their job smoothly. Together, this trinity made one of the most effective coastal engineering systems in not just America, but also the world. The Columbia River jetties were undoubtedly an engineering marvel, however, it certainly couldn't compete with nature. By the late 20th century, the jetty system had encountered massive Pacific storms, relentless wave energy, and rising sea levels, which took a toll on the system. Massive stones were tossed around like mere pebbles under these conditions. 
entire sections of the jetty sank, cracked or collapsed due to this increasing pressure, and the ocean started to up its wrath. The inland side couldn't escape erosion, and stress fractures started creeping up. Under these conditions, navigating around the passage became hazardous again, and the jetties which were built to protect these ships began to threaten their safety. These risky conditions were no joke, as billions of trade was at risk. The very lifeline that fueled economic growth in the Pacific Northwest began to tremble. It was a stark reminder from nature that you can build any colossal structure you want, but it can never be bigger than nature. Slowly, the Columbia River Bar was going back to its nickname, Graveyard of the Pacific. Under these rising tensions, it was pretty clear that the jetties needed a rebuild to survive the 21st century. In the early 2010s, the US Army Corps of Engineers finally started working on one of the most ambitious coastal rebuilds in US history. These crumbling rock walls and unforgiving ocean needed a solution that could move mountains, quite literally. Thousands of tons of rocks were hauled in from areas like Idaho and Montana for the rebuild. These rocks were meticulously picked to ensure proper density and spikes to ensure they lock in like puzzles and withstand the harsh nature. Cranes, helicopters, and barges were working in collaboration to ensure that each stone is placed precisely to build a modern fortress along the shore. This rebuilding process wasn't about just brute force engineering. Instead, designers were a big part of this project. They used sonar mapping, decades of wave pattern data, and digital modeling to create a structure that would withstand time. The jetty system wasn't being rebuilt as it was. They were modernizing this system to make sure it doesn't crumble again under tough conditions. This rebuild was a race against tide and time. It proved one thing. No matter how confident you are on your technology, you simply cannot compete with nature. If nature pushes, you must push back with ingenuity and sheer will. The Columbia River jetties are more than just rock and concrete. They are a legacy carved by human hands and testament to their resilience. A project which began in the 1800s as an ambitious fix to a deadly navigation problem has quickly become a feat of civil engineering that is now an identity of the Pacific Northwest. For over 100 years, these jetties stood strong to protect not just fishermen and cargo ships, but also an entire region's growth. These colossal structures shaped economies and transformed once isolated ports into international ones. Every portion of this structure is a reminder of mankind's enduring desire to take down chaos and search for solutions for the unsolvable. The jetties are still evolving in 2025. They now have sensors to monitor wave impact and drones to scan for erosion. The consistent efforts being made by engineers and experts to ensure the longevity of these structures. The team is working toward improving these structures by using AI, satellite data, and hydrodynamic modeling to make sure the structure remains sturdy and secure for the future. Building megastructures like the Columbia River jetties is no easy task. Apart from design, construction is another major issue. To ensure several cargo and passenger vessels move through the jetties easily, they need to have a strong base, and for that they used basalt. Basalt is an organic rock known for its distinctive durability, weight, and erosion resistance. These gigantic rocks were from different quarries all over the United States. Weighing around 15 tons each, these rocks were a hassle to move and transport. Special cars were designed to carry these boulders, while cranes and barges choreographed a bed of steel and stone. The engineers used gravity, manpower, and a touch of ingenuity to precisely drop each basalt piece into place. Steam engines, tugboats, and dredges became the unsung heroes of this operation, which helped in numerous ways. For the build, timing was everything, as each tide had to be perfect and weather needed to be favorable, as a single mistake could ruin weeks of work. Rebuilding the Columbia River jetties wasn't about just stacking rocks. Instead, it was about using modern technology to our favor to fight nature. In the 2000s and beyond, engineers installed sonar mapping systems, real-time monitoring tools, and GPS-guided cranes to ensure every single boulder landed in its perfect place. This was an excellent example of geometry at its peak. Even with these high-tech gadgets, the jetties still remain one of the most unforgiving places in America. 
Engineers have to deal with unpredictable waves, freezing winds, and unstable terrain while operating these gigantic pieces of machinery. One false move, and there could be havoc. And that's all for today. What do you think? With all these high-tech gadgets and upgrades, can the Columbia River jetties survive the course of time? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and while you're there, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this.